Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 18941. This build includes a number of notable changes and enhancements over the last few public preview builds and indeed the last build video. So yes, we're back with another build video. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the changes and improvements Microsoft has added to the last few builds. Nothing huge here, as has been the case with most 20H1 builds so far. Hopefully it will pick up when it comes to new features soon. Uh, but for now, most of the changes are very minor. So diving straight in, the first noteworthy change uh, that was added in the last couple of builds is the ability to add calendar events straight from the calendar flyout on the taskbar now. So if you come down here, you see there's a new box that I can now begin typing into. So if I want to add, say, meeting with Jim. Today at 2 p.m., I can add location, office building press save and now that has been added to my calendar for the day you can see it down here and if I click on that that will take me into the calendar app where I can add more information if I need to so that's pretty nice and quick and easy way to add things to your calendar without having to open the calendar app uh, moving on the next noteworthy change is in the settings app and it's to do with signing into your Microsoft account so Microsoft is working on ways to remove your password from your account so coming down here, there is a new option called make your device passwordless. And if I turn this on, my password is gone. As simple as that. It only works on devices that have Windows Hello. So if you have facial unlock or fingerprints, you can turn on this feature. So now if I go to the lock screen here and try to swipe up, you will see that there is no option to type a password. It's just face or pin. So that's um, an interesting new feature. Um, if you prefer typing with a password, of course, you can keep that off. Now, believe it or not, turning this feature on is actually more secure. It does sound weird saying, hey, not having a password is more secure than having a password. But when you think about it, it makes sense. It's likely that your Windows password is a memorable phrase or word, something that you can remember and type in every day. Unless you're using a password manager that generated a very complex, secure passcode, your password is probably your mother's maiden name or something, you know, very memorable to you. And that's not secure. So turning off passwords and relying entirely on biometrics is the best way to go because that's very difficult to copy and it's personal to you. So you don't have to remember anything because, you know, it's your own face or fingerprint. And it's more difficult for attackers to try and copy that. So turning off passwords or making your device passwordless is a great idea and something everybody should do. In fact, it says recommended down here. I don't know if it would be on by default. It was off for me on this device. I'm guessing it depends on whether you upgrade to this version or if your PC comes with this version installed. So moving right along, the next noteworthy change is with notifications and the ability to customize what notifications show up where. Now, unfortunately, this is an A-B test by the looks of things, and I'm not seeing it on my end, but I can show you a screenshot. And uh, this isn't actually a new thing. It's just Microsoft has updated this UI slightly and added these little thumbnail previews for show notification banners and show notifications in the Action Center. Um, but this has always been a thing you can cu customize and change. Something that is new, however, is the ability to sort the list of apps that send notifications within the settings app. So if you come down here, there's now this new drop down that I can select most recent or name. And this is handy because if an app that's installed on your PC sends you a notification that you no longer want to see, instead of having to scroll through this list alphabetically, you can now see it show up at the very top and vice versa. So that's an easy way to quickly come up and say, nope, no more notifications from you. And that will no longer send notifications, which is very nice indeed. Okay, so that's pretty much it for all the notable new changes on the surface. There are some improvements to eye control, but I will do a separate video on that when I get the hardware for it because my actual eye tracker appears to be broken. But I can show you a screenshot. Basically, the eye bar, as I like to call it, the eye tracking bar that shows up at the top of the screen when it's enabled has been updated with more options and stuff. Like I said, we'll take a closer look at that in another video another time. Uh, but for now, that's basically it on the side of official features. Now, there are some features that Microsoft hasn't announced that are sort of working in this build, albeit hidden. You can enable them through tools and stuff. Um, for example, one of them, which is something we did mention in the last build video, the ability to name virtual desktops is now here and it is working this time. So in the last one, it wasn't really working, but now it is. So I can call this productivity and that saves as productivity and I can call this one play. Uh, and that actually saves across reboots, I believe. So if I restart my computer, those virtual desktops will remain and should hopefully remember the apps that are usually in those 
virtual desktops, which is very nice indeed. Okay, so another feature that's been updated since the last build video is the Cortana experience, the new Cortana chat experience that we showcased before. Uh, Microsoft still hasn't announced this feature either, so it's still technically off and you have to use tools to enable it, but it has been updated, so let's showcase that now. So unlike the last time we looked at it, now when you click on the icon down here, it will start listening automatically. To stop it from listening, you just type. So it automatically listens, but if you don't want to talk, you don't have to, you can just start typing and that automatically cancels the listening mode. So if we click on it here, you'll see it's now listening. But if I just say hello there, it will stop um, listening for me and will just revert to typing instead. Um, voice does work now, so weather. Right now, it's lightly raining. And that works and as expected. Now, if you come up to the top here and go to settings, you'll see that the settings UI has changed from being the Windows PC experience for Cortana uh, to the Android iOS experience for Cortana. So this is the same UI you get on the mobile apps instead of the PC one. I'm not sure if this is a deliberate change or if it's accidental or not, but it works as intended. And I actually think this UI is a little bit easier to deal with. If you click on this device, you can go, that takes you straight into settings, which allows you to enable and disable things like Hey Cortana, which does work in this build. So if we try that now, Hey Cortana, weather. Right now, it's lightly raining and, and that's how that works. So it is slightly animated and stuff. It looks quite nice, I think. Of course, it's still early. There's still work that needs to be done to make this a complete experience. But these initial sort of hidden versions of the app do work quite nicely, I think. So that's really nice to see. And of course, if you didn't see that there, if we jump back into settings, go to privacy, go down to voice activation, you'll see the ability to set Cortana as um, an assistant that works when your device is locked also works, except there's no UI for it yet. So when you lock the device and say, hey, Cortana, it just, you know, starts speaking to you. There's no UI for it, unfortunately. Um, and it's also, to be fair, how this is worded makes it sound like other assistants will be able to do this as well. So that'll be very interesting to see in the future. Uh, now, one last thing I want to quickly show off is uh, the OneDrive UWP app, which isn't related to the build specifically, uh, but I just want to show it off anyway because it's in the fast ring right now, this update. And what it does is it changes the OneDrive app into a PWA. So if you've not used the OneDrive PWA before, it's actually really good. And this experience is more or less like a native app. We can come in here and we can obviously edit our documents and whatnot. We can also drag other documents into our OneDrive. So if we go here and create a new text document just for an example. We can drag that into OneDrive here and that will upload to our OneDrive like you would expect. Well, it would work if that was a real file, but apparently it's not according to OneDrive. If we come up here and go into settings, you'll see that this is slightly tailored to the fact that it is the OneDrive UWP app. There's the ability to reset the app here. So that's quite interesting. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this happen to all of the um, Office UWP apps, including Word Mobile, Excel Mobile, because if you don't know, um, Microsoft has some really good um, web apps for Office, and this is what they look like. And to be fair, they behave more or less like the UWP apps already. So I wouldn't be surprised to see um, more of the uh, Office apps get updated as PWAs in the future. Um, not the Win32 ones, of course, I'm talking specifically the UWP ones. Um, but uh, that's pretty much it for this build video guys. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye bye